Hello and welcome back to my RC channel. I'm Andy RC and today I'm going to be taking a look at the Speedy Bee Bluetooth module that will allow you to configure Betaflight from your mobile device wirelessly. Now, this isn't as straightforward unfortunately as I was hoping it was going to be. You can see we've got this connector here and a load of wires. So the wires are ground and then 5 volt and then we have got RX and TX which you will need a spare UART for and then this other one here which is called BLE switch and what this is going to do is this is going to connect up to a soft serial and it's going to disable this module when you arm it and this is the tricky bit really if you've got a spare you are then your TX goes to your RX and your RX goes to your TX etc but with something like this we're gonna have to do remapping now they do tell you how to do the remapping and they've given you the code here and this is where I think a lot of people will get lost because you know this will put a lot of people off but I'm gonna show you how to do it and hopefully make it as simple as possible. So considering this is going to require some remapping I thought I would go all out and I'd also do a soft serial tutorial as well because I'm going to be using this DT140 here from Fury B and it's only got one spare UART. Now if I also want to add say camera controls which also needs a TX and an RX then I'm gonna to have to free up something somewhere. Now you can see that this is the V2 of the HLRC stack and it's using the TRAMP protocol and that's going in there on the UART 6 you see and we have a receiver pad that is not being used so my thinking is that I can actually take the smart audio cable and move it to the LED solder pad and then remap the small audio to a soft serial and then we've got another separate soft serial pad that I can use and that is the PPM pad so I can then remap that for the switch that will then allow me to have UART 3 and UART 6 free so I can then plug up the TX and RX of the Bluetooth module and also the TX and RX of this guy as well. Now it sounds easy in principle but let's see if I can solder all this up and then I'll show you how we program it up in Betaflight. Okay so to recap Tramp Audio moved from TX6 to LED pad and then we have got the switch from the Bluetooth module going into the PPM pad. Both of those will have to be remapped. And then I've got the TX and RX going into the UART 6 for the Bluetooth module. And then for the camera, I've got the TX and RX going in for camera control. I've taken the 5 volt from the 5 volt out on the VTX and hopefully the Beck in this will be strong enough. I know it's been a pretty strong Beck in the past when I have put a split mini in there so everything should be fine here, fingers crossed. Let's get all of this back together and then I'll take a look at how we configure all of this to get it working in beta flight. Okay, so here we are in beta flight and the first thing I did was upgraded the version of beta flight to version 3.31. This will not work with a lower version than 3.3, a bit of a downside. I also took a copy of the CLI, so you type in dump, save all of this because I'm doing remapping. If I screw any of this up for the most part, you can copy this back into the CLI and rescue it. So I've written down where I have soldered things to so the tramp is soldered to the LED solder pad the switch for the Bluetooth module to the PPM pad and then the RX and TX of the Bluetooth modules on UART 6 and the cam controls is on UART 3 and I've written everything down that I need to do for the resource mapping as well so what is resource remapping let's go into the CLI and type in resource Right, so you see all of these numbers here, these relate to pins 
on the processor and they are linked to certain functions so this pin is linked to motor 1 this pin motor 2 etc so I soldered up the protocol for the VTX to the LED strip but it's currently assigned to LED strip A01 and I want to assign it to a soft serial which basically lets me assign it to anything right but it's not only assigned to LED strip 1 if we look A01 also appears up here it's linked to motor 5 so we need to free up this resource and of course we don't need motor 5 because this is a quadcopter and this quadcopter doesn't have an LED strip so that's why I'm using that if you have an LED strip you might want to use something else I'm pretty much maxing out this <laughs> flight controller right now so if I go into the text file you will see I've written down resource LED underscore strip 1 none that is freeing it up resource motor 5 non again freeing up both of those then resource serial underscore TX 11 so your soft serials start at 11 and you're allowed two of them so if you wanted a second one you would put serial TX 12 and then I'm reassigning that to A01 and of course we'd have to go into the configuration and turn on soft serial and we can reassign A01 then to anything that I want and in this case you know it's going to be for the tramp protocol so you know I'll sort that out a little bit later now I've got the switch soldered to the PPM pad that is the switch that turns off the Bluetooth module when you disarm and that is down here now all of this this is code that they've provided in the instructions it's it's like a a new function pin IO I think it is it, it's basically giving the instructions to use the solder pad as a switch I believe but you can copy this direct from the instructions but You'll see I am using PPM pad here for the switch and if we look up here PPM is linked to B14 but PWM is also linked to B14 and if we come down here ESC serial is linked to B14 so we need to free all of those up and of course make sure that I'm not using any of them which I'm not. So I'm making sure there's no other instances of B14 down here and there aren't so I'm copying their code here, but then I'm freeing up PPM1 to none. I'm freeing up PWM1 to none, and also freeing up ESC serial 1 to none as well. And then resource pin IO 1 B14, I'm remapping it to that. So I can copy all of this here now and then paste that in there. And if I follow it along, I'm just going to make sure I haven't had any errors. So that's freed it up there, that's freed there and then it's changed the resource to A01. All of this seems to have worked, yeah, we don't have any errors. Resource freed, resource freed, and then it says that set to B14. So yes, all of that has worked. I'm now going to type save, and then it will reboot. So it's just a couple of things that I need to take note of here now, and that is what I'm going to change in here. So if I connect to it, and if we go into, well, first of all, I'll show you configuration, sorry, imports. You'll notice there's no soft serial, right? So what I need to do is I need to go into configuration and turn on soft serial and then save and reboot. And then hopefully soft serial should show. Now, it only shows if you put that command in, like the soft serial TX 11 and 12, but if we go into ports now, you'll see soft serial. Now, in order to get the Bluetooth module working, we need to turn on MSP, and also, I think we have to put in a number here. It says 19200, so that's important to note. Yeah, so it's the same as your USB virtual COM port, you have to turn this on here, that's how it gets the data. Right, so what did we say? Soft serial, so that one is the LED strip and that is the tramp, right? So I can actually disable that because that's what it was before. So this is now going to be the tramp. 
And then I think if we go on to here, I think I said the UART3 is the cam controls. So if I go into the UART3 here and then select run cam device, and I think that is pretty much everything there. So we've got the UART1 for the receiver, UART3 we've got for the cam controls, UART6 is for our Bluetooth module, soft serial is for the tramp, and then finally we have that switch on that pino option and you don't have to do anything for that it should just work so i'm going to save and reboot and that is everything in beta flight so the moment of truth let's see if all of that has worked so i've just got the module hanging out the side there so you can see the lights by the way it weighs about 2.2 grams with the harness so yeah it's going to add weight but it's not too bad so let's just plug this in here so we shouldn't get any lights coming up straight away but this isn't armed, so if I open up the Speedy Speedy B app and then it says scanning, you'll see there that it says the Bluetooth hotspot. So if I just tap into there, it says initializing, and there we go. We've got everything. You've got every single one of your tabs. So there's your config tab is changed a little bit, but wow, not too much I have to say. And all of that is working there. And if we come down here, you've got the even got the CLI. So if you want to type in something into the CLI, that is there. That is awesome. So let's disconnect from that, and let's see if. It actually turns off so actually when you're connected the light should go blue so let's just make sure that it's doing that but it connected so it must be doing there you go so the light goes blue when you connect to it so if I just disconnect there and then if we do the scan thing right so if I do is it tap to scan or can't remember hello I have to tap the little B Right, you see where it says there, the Bluetooth hotspot? Let's arm it. And then if I press refresh, that should disappear. There we go. It's turned off, so that is working. Fantastic. So, let's see if everything else is working. So, if we just take a look through the goggles now, and I can already see the Fat Shark channel there, so that is working no problem. And the last thing to do is to check camera control. So what is that throttle in the middle? And then is it your to the right? And there we go, remote control. And then there's all my camera controls. So it is a success, it has all worked. Fantastic. And of course, I have no spare ports left whatsoever. I suppose if I wanted to do telemetry on my receiver, I could try F port. And, well, that's a completely different video. But anyways, thank you so much for watching. I'll leave a link to my Patreon in the below if you found this useful. It would help me out a lot. And as always, thanks so much for watching. Please continue to subscribe. Cheers.